the headlines gunmen abduct 25 travelers in ondo state police arrest seven suspected kidnappers in adamawa state tribunal affirms agbu kefas as duly elected governor of taraba away from nigeria suicide bomber kills at least seven in somali tea shop al shabaab claims responsibility hello and welcome to trust tv news update i am sumaya abubakar thank you for joining us and now the details Suspected gunmen have abducted the Christians' worshippers in the Akure area of Ondo State. The worshippers are members of the Christ Apostolic Church, the CAC, OK Igan, in Akure, the state's capital, who were traveling for a burial. It was gathered that the worshippers were abducted along the notorious Ifon Road in the Ose local council area of the state on Friday evening. A source confirmed the incident in the early hours of Saturday to reporters in Akure. The source, who is also a member of the church, said the worshippers were mostly choir members traveling on the road and were waylaid by the gunmen who led them into the bush. Now, Daily Trust reporter in Ondo State, Tosin Tokwe, gives an update. Well, um, just like you uh, said, we woke up to the shocking news of uh, about uh, 25 worshippers of uh, CACOK gun that uh, were abducted by suspected men. But as I talk to you now, uh, according to the State police PR that uh, Mrs. Fumi Lai Odunlami just confirmed that uh, the boss that was conveying the victims were found somewhere around the highway in uh, Ifon or the local government area of the state. And uh, you know, Ifon has been a very uh, dreaded area that it has been a nightmare for, for passengers. Uh, we have recorded uh, kidnapping cases in that area. And that uh, specific area, that uh, Lake Deca, is uh, a border town that is close to Edo State. It's sharing a border between Ondo and Edo State. So that, that's just the latest. And uh, it, it's all that spoke with us. We was able to confirm that uh, some of the victims were Choi members, were Choi, were coincidence in the church. And they were on their way to attend the burial ceremony of one of the church members when, when they were kidnapped. And uh, that particular area too, don't forget, was where the uh, Ulu found as the, uh, a great, a great a traditional ruler of that community was also killed by suspected government that uh, in 20, November 2022, to be specific. So the area I led the has been a notorious uh, area in the state and has always been a kidnapper then. Yes. According to the security agencies, uh, they, they already in the bush, they are combing the area to ensure that the victims uh, are rescued. Although this will not be the time, this will not be the first time the, the security agencies will already tell us they are on top of the situation. But uh, like, like I said, that area has been notorious, as it has always been a nightmare for, for, for motorists and travelers. And it is expected that uh, a checkpoint uh, should be placed in that area. But uh, with the situation so far, many of the uh, Ondo State Security Agency network, otherwise known as Amotec Mkoff, and the police, including the DSS and the uh, men of the Nigerian Armed Forces are already at that scene as I speak, uh, according to information. Mm. They are already combing the bush to ensure that the victims are, are rescued alive. And also with what the PPRO told me a few minutes ago, that uh, men of the anti kidnapping squad are also joining the, the unit to ensure that the victims are rescued and also the kidnappers also are arrested within, within the maximum time. And let me also inform you that I also spoke with uh, the Christian, uh, the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria in Ondo State, that uh, Reverend uh, Ulugua. I talked to him and he told me that although he is not aware yet that the Khan unit in that particular area has not informed him, but he also condemned 
the kidnapping case and also charge the security agencies to rescue the victim alive. No, but now no no demand yet and no response from them and uh, it's it's uh, unusual. Although it's not uh, yet 24 hours, uh, what we learned was that the, the, the kidnapping of our, our, uh, around 3 p.m. yesterday, Friday. So we are still expecting if they will get in contact with their family to demand ransom. Uh, with the situation in the past, anytime there is a kidnapping within 24 hours, the kidnappers will always reach out to the family members to, to demand ransom. But in this case, uh, it's starting uh, about 25 of the first worshippers who were to be kidnapped. So we don't know how they want to go about it yet. So they'll be contacting the 25 families to ask for ransom. But it's expected that anytime soon they might probably contact the family member to ask for ransom. Meanwhile, the police in Adamawa State have arrested 11 people over alleged kidnapping. The seven are said to have been terrorizing parts of Girie, Tambo and Borong villages in Girie and Demsa local government areas. The Adamawa State Police Command, which affected the arrest, said in a press release on Saturday that the suspects were picked up on Friday, September 29th. The release signed by the state's police public relations officer, Suleiman Nguroje, identified the suspects as Kabiru Mohammed, 42 years old, and Ibrahim Audu, 17 years. Others are Hassan Usman, 40 years, Musa Sani, 22 years, Bello Ibrahim, 35 years, Abdullah Hisaidu, 17 years, and Muhammad Abdu, 40 years, all residents of Tambo Giri local government areas. The farmers in Katsina are made to pay levies by bandits before they can harvest their farm produce as insecurity ravaging the state continue to take a toll on the people. Abdullahi Yamadi reports that farmers in Mosawa, Matazu, Damusa, Gangara, Faskari, Sabwa and Dendume are forced to contribute money to get access to their farms. The report. It is harvest time for millet, beans and maize in local government areas of southern Kazana. But farmers are struggling as many will have to pay bandits, at least to allow them access their farm for harvest. For instance, farming communities in remote areas of Musawa and Matazu paid about 6 million naira to the bandits for them to harvest farm produce after several appeals to the terrorists. A lot of farmland now become ideal. Farmers are running away from their farmland because there is no security. If you go to your farm, the bandit will come in your farm and attack you. To make things worse, about five people, including women and children, were abducted from the communities even before negotiations. This implies that Ransom must be paid to the bandits to secure the release of their family members apart from the six million naira paid for access to the farms. Residents prefer not to speak to camera to hide their identity for the fear of further attacks on their villages. Similarly, commercial drivers in Kazuna Plain, Kankara, Shemi, Shemi Gusau Road, have abandoned the road, describing it as death trap. Katana, current Namwada Road, is another deserted road, as any driver who chooses to ply the road does so at his own risk. There, are, there is a lot of security cases that are happening uh, along the Jibe Road, so that's why people prefer to follow through from Toro. Get me clear, please. Insecurity has devastated this region, and anybody suggesting negotiations with terrorists should be treated as a traitor. Look, we know what we are going through over the last nine years. Hundreds of people from Kazuna State alone are currently in the hands of bandits who abduct and treat people like animals. The underground work being initiated by Governor Rada 
is a welcome development and we hope that will work. The drivers are calling on the federal government to secure the region from the incessant bandits attacks. Abdullahi Izumayamadi, Post Television News, Kazana. Over 2,000 internally displaced persons taking refuge at Baka Camp in North Bank area of Makodi, local government area of Benue State, have accused the youth of the area of attacking and dispossessing them of their food and other essential items distributed to them by the Benue State government. The IDP stated this during a protest in the area. The report. The internally displaced persons who are protesting the action of the suspected youth in the area called on the state government to beef up security around the camp when next they are sending relief items to them to avert further occurrences. Some of them said the best thing for them is to relocate them back to their ancestral homes. It was um, 150 bags of rice, 150 bags of uh, beans, uh, also 150 bags of uh, gari. Uh, they, they were sheared inside and also the youth around came and packed them inside their tent around here, inside here. But this thing happened yesterday. Some of us cried. Every time anything comes here, they will not allow uh, the government to do for the IDP first. They will start dragging for their own. So the youth started, they were angry. They started removing some bags. I removing some bags. I myself, I dragged a jerry can of oil. A youth gave me a dirty slap today. My back is paining. The government should help us. The only help that the government will help us should take us to our village. Because in our village, we used to farm humbam kwasi. And then humbam kwasi, we will eat. Eat and belly food here. We don't have food. How many days I didn't eat? The district head of the area, as well as the youth leader, expressed disappointment over the attack and promised to address the incident. Whether it was youth or the women that uh, they started coming in, started, they were impatient. They started coming, they pushed us, they started pushing us. So that was exactly what happened. That is the only thing I know. Not tell you precisely that it was my youth that done that. I'm just telling you that. We didn't know where those people just came from. They now came and then start attack. And that's where everything was vanished. They collected everything. It wasn't my youth, let me put it through. Meanwhile, an official of the Benue State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, said they have taken note of the situation and will address it soon. Jimmy Azande, Trust TV News, Makodi. In politics, the Governorship Election Petition Tribunal in Taraba State, sitting in Jalungu on Saturday, dismissed the New Nigeria People Party, the NNPP, petition for lack of merit and upheld the election of Governor Agbu Kefas. Chairman of the Tribunal, Justice G.A. Sumonu, while ruling on the petition filed by Mohammed Saadi Yahya, the governorship candidate in the March 2023 governorship election, said the petition challenging the election Agu Kefas lack merit. Justice Sumonu's ruling on the petition was supported by the other judges in the tribunal, Justice Yu Omwasi and Kadi MNCD. The state deputy governor who attended the court session in his reaction extended the PDP's government's hand of fellowship to the NNPP and advised all NNPP members in the state to support Governor Agbu Kefa's administration to bring the desired development in the state. Counsel to NNPP and key members of the party hurriedly left the tribunal without commenting on the ruling. In the meantime, Governor Agbu Kefas has described his victory at the tribunal as a triumph of the people's will. Kefas said this victory belongs exclusively to the Taraba people and all lovers of democracy. 
Kefas in a statement he issued through his senior assistants on media and digital communication, Emmanuel Bello, said that he welcomes the ruling and extend hand of friendship to NNPP. He also congratulated the judiciary for standing true to their calling and upholding what is right and just. You're watching news update on Trust TV. Coming up, we'll take a look at how selling dead animals meat landed eight in trouble. This and more after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is News Update on Trust TV. Here is a recap of our top stories. Report you gunmen abduct 25 travelers in Ondo State. And police arrest seven suspected kidnappers in Adamawa State. Now moving on to more stories, a report just reaching us that says that the Secretary of State's Governorship Election Petition Tribunal has dismissed the petition of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, and its candidate, Saidu Umar, challenging the victory of the All Progressive Congress and its candidate, Ahmed Aliyu, in the March 18th governorship election in the state. The tribunal ruled that the petitioners failed to prove their case beyond reasonable doubt. We will bring you details in our subsequent bulletin. The Nigeria Labour Congress, the NLC and the Trade Union Congress, the TUC in River State, have directed their members and affiliate unions to fully comply with the proposed nationwide strike from October 3rd. The state's NLC chairman, Alex Aguanwo, gave the directive after a joint leadership meeting of the NLC and the TUC at the NLC Secretariat in Port Harcourt on Friday. The TUC delegation to the meeting was led by its vice chairman, Christopher Amadi. Aguanwo said, barring any changes, there will be a total shutdown of all facilities and operations under the control of NLC and TUC members in River State as directed by their national executive councils. The NLC chairman said the planned strike, contrary to some views, is an attempt towards liberating Nigeria and its workers from the current economic hardship occasioned by the removal of fuel subsidy. The Labour leader also announced that a joint committee has been constituted by the NLC and the TUC to monitor the compliance to the proposed strike in the state. He warned that airing affiliate unions will be disciplined appropriately. The operatives of the Federal Operations Unit of the Nigerian Customs in the southwest zone have arrested a wildlife smuggling kingpin, Felix Maiva, who has been on the run since 2021. According to a statement by the spokesperson for FOU Zone A, the suspect is a shipping agent for an organized crime group that is wanted by the Nigeria Customs Service for their involvement in the January 2021 seizure and other organized wildlife trafficking offenses. The acting controller of the unit, Hosseini Ejibunu, commended the officers for their tact, intelligence and consistency in following up on the suspect, adding that smuggling suspects, no matter how far they run, will be caught by the long arms of the law. 
Ejibunu also described the breakthrough as a morale booster for the officers following up on similar cases and suspects. My verse arrest is a fallout of an intense investigation and surveillance over the discovery of a one by 20 feet container laden with 4,752 kg of elephant's ivory, 5,239 kg of pangolin scales, 5 kg of rhinoceros hunts and some lion skeletons to be exported to Haiphong, Vietnam in January 2021 through the Apapa Seaport, Lagos State. The operatives of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps have arrested eight persons allegedly selling dead animals meat in Gombe State. The suspects were apprehended following intelligence gathered by operatives of the NSCDC command in the state. Ibrahim Ismail reports. 40-year-old Mary Paul is the leader of the Dead Animal Meat Syndicate operating in Gombe for the past two years. This dead cow was impounded from the syndicate when operatives of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps intercepted the team. While transporting the dead animal, they bought at the rate of 30,000 naira. You know, since I used to sell bush meat, bush meat, so I do smoke both that one too, together with the bush meat. I'm sorry, it's condition. I don't have a husband, it's what I used to feed the children. We usually cut the meat into pieces, roast it, and then transport it to Delta State. Then the CDC said it will not take the matter lightly because selling meat from dead animals constitutes danger to people's lives. We arrested five suspects, but our ongoing investigations show that there are remaining ones that have fled. And I make bold to tell you that we have arrested the three. They are all now complete, intact. Eight of them are here. Now, uh, after a dutiful uh, investigation, they will be taken to court so that they will answer their charges. It is not clear how many people might have eaten the unhealthy dead animals meat bought from the suspects, but it has been confirmed that the syndicate has been operating for over two years, suggesting that a lot of people might have consumed the unwholesome meat. Ibrahim Ismail. Trust TV News, Gombe. A cross section of thief people in Nigeria's north central state of Benue have debunked allegations that their men offered their wives to visitors as entertainment. This followed a viral video by an evicted reality TV star insinuating that the thief men were into such acts as part of their hospitality for visitors. Jimmy Antandi reports. Since the latest videos of Fez Online, there have been reactions from across board. Senior citizens of Thief origin said it has always been the culture and tradition of the Thief man to offer the highest level of hospitality to his visitor, a situation often been misinterpreted or misrepresented through mischief. People who make such insults know that people don't, Thief people don't give out their wives to visitors, friends and strangers alike. They happen that because of the magnanimity of tea people, hospitability of tea of tea people. Tea people are good to visitors. They are good to themselves. They are good to visitors. When a visitor comes, you give him a lot of attention. You ask your wife to give him drinking water, give him food, put water for him to bath. It's an insult that casts the tea people as a movement. They are too good, so they are likely to give their wives are true. This association is known by the people who make it that is a lie. Seeing one very well does not necessarily mean you are giving the whole property, including wife, to that person to deal with. It's so uncultural. And sometimes I look at such things because of uh, maybe out of jealousness. Jealousness because uh, when you treat somebody very well and other people look at it, they feel that they should also be doing as such. And if they could not, they start giving you names and giving you negative, uh, giving a negative impression of the other side. It just never happened, it will never happen. But if you think you will try it, come and try and see. The grave will be the result. Nobody will give you up his wife to a visitor in Thailand. The women on their part, while sharing their experiences on the issue, said the insinuation is only a figment 
of the imagination of people who have not experienced the TIF culture. I have been teaching TIF in this university for the past 15 years. Yes, I've been teaching So, as someone who is teaching the culture of TIF people, I'm supposed to know the culture of my people. I have never had that experience of him asking me or lending me out to a friend or any of his brothers. And I have not heard, not from my father, not from my mother, not from any other T person. It's totally unofficially wrong that a T man would take his wife. And then, no, 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 it doesn't happen. It doesn't just happen. I don't know where those lies came up from, whether they were from the outsiders or wherever, I don't know. But it's totally wrong. They submitted that this institution has been on for decades and wondered if any tradition will subject their wives to such demeaning level. Jimmy Azande, Trust TV News, Makodi. Away from Nigeria, at least seven people were killed and several others wounded on Friday after a suicide bomber attacked a busy tea shop near Somalia's presidential palace in the capital, Mogadishu, police and witnesses said. The blast occurred at Bar Bulsho, Mogadishu, near a security checkpoint leading to the office of Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud and the headquarters of Parliament Police Spokesman Sadiq Dodishi said. The tea shop is popularly with or popular with members of Somalia's security forces and was often crowded in the afternoon with people drinking tea and chewing cut, a resident said. Al-Qaeda aligned militant group Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility, saying it had killed 11 soldiers and wounded 18 others. And finally in sports, the Confederation of African Football CAF has listed 85 referees for a preparatory course ahead of the 2023 African Cup of Nations. No Nigerian referees made the short list released by CAF on Tuesday. The list includes center referees, assistant referees, the video assistant referees, the VAR, technical instructors, physical trainees, the VAR technicians and its support. Egypt and Algeria have the highest number of referees on the list with three each. Four VAR referees were selected from Mauritius, South Africa, Morocco and Egypt. Seven technical instructors and physical trainers from Zimbabwe, Burundi, Côte d'Ivoire, Senegal, Morocco and Djibouti were selected. The Super Eagles of Nigeria are among the 24 countries that will compete for the title at the 2023 AFCON Finals to be hosted by Côte d'Ivoire from January 13th to February 11th, 2024. And with that, we wrap up news update on Trust TV. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. You can join our YouTube live stream for more news, programs and documentaries. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching.